What I'm going to do next is invite our panelists and kick off our grander conversation and, and really looking forward to that. First, I'm going to introduce Shane Parker, CAO, if you want to make your way up to the stage. Shane served as CDA Grand Prairie from 2017 to 2021 in a variety of roles. In 2021, Shane left his role as a Corporate Services Director to accept the position as CAO in the municipality of Sun Peaks Mountain Resort. He returned to the city as a city manager in September of 2023, and we're happy to have him back. Through his career, he has worked at every level of government, including as Chief of Staff for several ministries at the Government of Canada and Director of Issues Management at the Office of the Premier of Alberta. Shane is glad to be back in Grand Prairie, especially glad to work with myself and Council. That's just fine. But he's not going to deny that. Uh, but he believes in entrepreneurship and innovation, community spirit are the things that shape the city's strength and making it, those things make a strong impact on Alberta's economy. His focus on, is on supporting council in accomplishing their ambitious agenda that includes projects such as the police service, health care attraction and retention, and brand refresh strategy. Next, I'd like to invite Tanya Oliver to the stage. Tanya brings 15 years of career experience in relationships, building, and stakeholder connecting as her role as the CEO of the district, uh, Grand Prairie District Chamber of Commerce. Tanya has a genuine enthusiasm for learning about chamber members and people behind the inter inner working of municipal government. A natural community builder with a growth focus on mindset, a growth mindset focus, Tanya thrives on diversity and understanding the values of different perspectives. She finds the many facets of business advocacy fascinating and appreciates the solution-based approach of the Chamber Board on local and provincial issues. Tanya is a lifelong learner, listens to those around her, and applies their knowledge on her own con uh, contribution in order to enhance the economic well-being of the community. Next, I'd like to invite Superintendent John Resbitt to the stage. John's background in law enforcement career spans more than three decades across Alberta, including the Serious Crimes branch, including major crimes where he was integral to the creation of the modern day version of the RCMP's Missing Person Unit. Respite joined the RCMP in Grand Prairie in 2013 as a detachment's plain clothes commander before going on to, deserve, to serve the district advisory NCO and the commissioned operations officer before being transferred to Edmonton to spend two years as the Director of Criminal Intelligence Service Alberta and, as re and retiring as the officer in charge of the Integrated Internet Child Exploitation Unit in, Alder in Alert. After retiring from the RCMP, John served as a Director with the Government of Alberta in charge of contract policing and policing oversight in the Public Safety and Emergency Services Ministry before joining GPPS in October of 2023. With his experience in the community and the appeal of branding of building a brand new municipal police service, Superintendent Resbitt says it was an easy decision to pursue his role. And last but definitely not least, I'd ask Dr. Vanessa Sheen to join the stage. Vanessa is a lifelong resident of the Peace Region. She was born and raised in Fairview and is a proud alumni who has made Grand Prairie her home. As the NWP President and CEO, Dr. Sheehan provides innovative leadership and ensures that academic programming, applied research, and student services are responsive to industry and community needs. Vanessa received her PhD in nursing from the University of Victoria in 2021 and has various publications associated with her interest in institutional systems, organizational structures, and challenges facing post-secondary and nursing education. Over the past decade, while serving at NWP, Dr. Sheen has held various high-level executive and teaching roles. She is a registered nurse and a member in good standing with the College of Registered Nurses of Alberta and is passionate about quality post-secondary experiences and building community capacity. Join me in welcoming our panel. Uh, so first, we're going to talk about the 2023 successes. It was an exciting year in our community, filled with many successes. And I'm just going to go through, starting with the panelists, and ask you to talk about some successes of your organization for 2023. And I'll start with Vanessa. Well, that was a bad morning, eh? I apologize. That's all right. Thanks, Mayor Clayton. 
So I'm, I'm happy to share the successes that NWP has seen in the 22-23 academic year. We had our first year-over-year -year enrollment growth of nearly 6%, and that was the first time since 2015 that we'd seen that enrollment growth. That growth was seen across all of our credentials, um, but substantial growth was seen in the programs of skilled trades and our health programs. This growth has continued into our current year, and we're seeing a double-digit uh, percentage in gro enrollment growth. We also expanded our health programs, so our Bachelor of Science in Nursing, our Practical Nursing, and, and our Healthcare Aid programs. And that expansion was dedicated seats for learners from the region. We also increased our apprenticeship seats where there was demand, and so that demand was in our heavy equipment, electrician, automotive service technician, and the industrial mechanic or millwright. For new programs, we had plenty of successes in 2023. We launched our first two degrees, so NWP's own degrees, a Bachelor of Business Administration as well as a Bachelor of Computing Science. We launched the second period of instrumentation and control technician, and that was in partnership with Spartan Controls. We launched an office professional certificate. We launched uh, business administration post diplomas uh, in financial planning, human resource management, and marketing. We added a cohort of business administration students that go through the summer. We launched the International Nurse Bridging Program, and that was in collaboration with three other post-secondaries. We developed and launched many uh, various micro-credentials from our continuing education department. We received $1.75 million in research funding from NSERC for our applied research. We also received $11.3 million from the province of Alberta to create a state-of-the-art power engineering and instrumentation lab in Grand Prairie. That's just to name a few. Thanks. John. Thank you, Your Worship. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, some successes for our organization. Uh, my goodness, where do we begin? 2023, Grand Prairie Police Service was born. Little history, after a marathon session, uh, you'll all recall, March 7th, 2023, Council, after a very lengthy uh, uh, debate, approved the establishment of a municipal police service for the city of Grand Prairie. That same month, after receiving approval from the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Services, Council passed a bylaw to create the Grand Prairie Police Commission. The Police Commission can consist of five to 12 members, and the province can also appoint three members, all dependent on the size of the commission. Council established the commission in March and began the search for candidates. And I understand that there were 72 applicants for that uh, competition, so we're very proud of the interest the community showed in uh, that. Our commission members, Chair Dan Wong, Vice Chair Natalie Riemann, Lois Duke, Timothy Burnham, Donna Cope, Two city council representatives, Kevin O'Toole and Dylan Bressy, and of course one provincial appointee, Warren Travasso. Commission's first task was to select a chief of police, and we saw that on the slide here earlier. Chief Dwayne Lacusta was selected and started in his role in August of 2023. The end of 2023 saw a total of six sworn members join the GPPS and a full integration of the mobile outreach program and the city enforcement program under our umbrella. This consolidation aims to enhance and streamline public safety for the city. We're very excited and looking very much forward to 2024. Wonderful, thank you so much for having us here today. Um, 2023 certainly held many successes for our Chamber of Commerce as well. Um, to end the year, we had an election, as always, for our Board of Directors, and we have quite a few of our Board of Directors here in the audience today, so thank you so much for joining us. One big undertaking that our staff and our board was able to unroll last year was our dues restructure. We had over 200 different various charges for dues for our members, and now we're simplified down to four. So you can imagine that decision didn't come lightly and it's certainly streamlined things and removed barriers in our office while we're welcoming new members on board. Our attendance really increased. Um, Pre-COVID, our mixer numbers were about 70 people average and we were up to 120 last year. So it was really great to see the engagement, um, some familiar, familiar faces every, every time and also some new um, ones. We enhanced our specific service region with the transition of Sexsmith Chamber members into the Grand Prairie District Chamber. We already had some Chamber members from Sexsmith and we were able to welcome some more, so we're excited with that enhancement. 
We have the Digital Service Squad program, which is free marketing service for businesses. That was extended until September of 2024, actually. And to date, we have almost 300 businesses served with that program. We hosted our first annual Your Region, Your Voice, and we're very proud of that event. We're proud of the relationships we've formed with all three levels of government and our membership in order to put that event on. So for those not familiar, we gather all three levels of government on stage. It's not a presentation, it's not scripted. The members then have an opportunity to go to the mic and ask the questions of our elected officials. And the, you know, the string of collaboration that came out through the different levels of government was really inspiring and we're super proud of that. We, um, advocacy is a big thing that our chamber does. We had our biometrics policy passed at the Canadian Chamber of Commerce and that solution will help immigrants stay in the city and access those services rather than having to take the time to travel to Edmonton to do that. You know, it reduces the burden on the employee and it reduces the burden on the employer as well. Another win we saw last year was actually a collaboration with the County of Grand Prairie and a policy to to, do, uh, to put blue lights on snow plows, tow trucks, and highway maintenance vehicles. So whenever I see those blue lights out on the side of the highway now, my heart smiles a little bit. It's going to save a lot of lives, and it's really helpful to encourage people to slow down. And the last highlight I will point out is our chamber was awarded Chamber of the Year through Alberta Chambers of Commerce for large chambers, and our board and staff are really proud of that. Thanks, Tammy. Shane. Uh, thank you. You can, of course, start with the highlight of the year being this great council you get to work with. Uh, yes, uh, September 15th was, uh, was a great day when I started as city manager here uh, in the wonderful city of Grand Prairie. Uh, I don't know if it's an advantage or disadvantage that I have to follow the, the wonderful video and the brochure on everyone's table that uh, highlights, uh, that uh, outlines our highlights. But there's, there's four that I wanted just to, to raise that uh, uh, are important to me and that they are decisions that will, uh, will impact and shape our community for the next, uh, next uh, several years. Uh, first is the uh, establishment of the police commission and appointment of the police chief. Uh, that really does fundamentally change uh, how, uh, how policing is in the city of Grand Prairie and uh, that local connection to our community. And, uh, and that'll have uh, an important impact uh, in, uh, in how we go forward. Uh, we've had uh, excellent service from the RCMP, and, but uh, this change uh, will, will show that benefit of, uh, of that local connection. I also want to talk about the activation under uh, uh, GPREP or our regional uh, um, emergency partnership. Um, that uh, um, uh, the importance of that or organization in, uh, in in municipalities in the region coming together to support uh, the response to the wildfires and being successful in that in uh, hosting the Northwest uh, Territories when they were facing a significant emergency. Really, how that's shaping the future is uh, these incidents will only likely become uh, more frequent, and the importance of that relationship uh, will will shape how we how we structure organization and resource. Uh, bodies like that, so that, that's something that uh, ex extreme success. Uh, but we'll also uh, look to, uh, to to be a more important resource as we go forward. I'd also look at the success we've had in transit, and that um, will shape how we how we design communities, build communities, and uh, has uh, that linkage, particularly in uh, the passes for 17 and under uh, for free, and how they access even our recreation facil facilities now that they are mo that they know they can be mobile and it's a reliable service. And that just shapes, uh, shapes many things, uh, as well as some of the late night service options that are, are just uh, showing that um, if we provide a reliable uh, uh, service, that, uh, that the users will, uh, will use it. And the final one is uh, uh, our move into the coordinated care campus. And that really does look to Grand Prairie and how we, uh, how we treat our most vulnerable citizens uh, and, uh, and improve uh, the quality of life for, for residents here. It also is a move for a number of municipal employees that will be moving in in, in this year. But those are kind of four things that I look to that were decisions made last year that we executed and uh, will we'll shape the community here for years to come. Thank you. Uh, I, would, I would suggest that uh, attraction and retention is something that's on every business owner's mind, every organization across our community and our region is faced with the need for workers in a variety of capacity. Uh, it tends to be a theme for not only the province, but the province's Alberta's calling campaign for our region, for our community, but it's really it plays an important role of the, the panelists here today. So I want to talk a little bit about attraction retention. 
as workers within each of the organizations. And I'll start with Shane. Um, the city is a major employer in the region with over a thousand employees. What are some successful strategies that the city has used to attract and retain employees? Um, yeah, we range from uh, 650, and if we start including casuals, up to just over a thousand employees at different points of the year, depending on summer winter operations. Uh, we're, I think, somewhat unique uh, um, for employers uh, in the city in that uh, we uh, have positions everywhere from that junior lifeguard through skilled trades and electricians and mechanics to engineers and accountants. So we are uh, hiring from that, from that broad spectrum. Uh, uh, key to us has, uh, we, when we faced uh, some, some challenges here in specific areas here recently, uh, some of it's training, particularly when you're looking at lifeguards and how we, how we look at providing more, more in-house training. Um, but we've also uh, f uh, focused more on um, uh, um, job fairs where we have to explain, not f explain, we uh, get to share how great it is to work for the city of Grand Prairie and how many opportunities there are. So really it is about telling our story uh, in, uh, to the community and, and potential em employees. I'll say the job fair, uh, the Youth Expo last week, uh, we're starting that earlier where we're saying, hey, there are great jobs in the, in the community and the city is one place uh, where, where we want you to at least consider. Uh, but that does match up with uh, the training and things that are happening at Northwest Polytechnic uh, to, uh, to find those positions. So it really is uh, just telling our story about how great a place the city of Grand Prairie is to live and how great a place it is to work for our organization. Thanks, Shane. Tanya, the Chamber plays a big role in assisting businesses and addressing workforce shortages. I know you're here from your memberships and from your members on a regular basis about their needs. Can you describe some of the work the Chamber is doing in terms of assisting businesses addressing their labor shortages? Thanks, Jackie. And I think you started out, you know, by saying that it really does touch every industry in every corner of our community and unfortunately that's the reality so it doesn't matter if it's entry-level positions skilled jobs and everywhere in between it really does affect um, all of our businesses so in 2019 our chamber you know brought together the city the county MDU Greenview and Northwestern Polytechnic and started you know project-based studies to try to dig in and understand more about our labor and understand what the opportunities and challenges were. That's really a grown and evolved over the years and now the Regional Workforce Development Partnership is actually led by the city, the county, and the MDU Greenview in partnership with ourselves and with Northwestern Polytechnic and we have some more substantial funding behind the initiative to really try to provide some tools to employers to bolster their um, attraction and retention efforts, as well as just make sure we're working together to address the various elements to help solve this issue. Unfortunately, it's not a one, um, not one thing that will solve it, so we're coming at it various different ways. Um, you can stay tuned in June. We are going to be launching our new website that will uh, be a tool for employers to enhance what they're doing already. Uh, we've learned there's a significant number of employers already doing significant efforts to attract people to the area. This will provide a kind of a one-stop shop to really shout from the rooftops and tell people what there is to offer here, um, from uh, quality of life amenities to actual job opportunities, various communities within our, our vast borders. So we're really excited about that. And also because of the strong partnership we have, we're able to leverage the funding dollars from the partners and unlock some other dollars from the province and the feds. So we can stay tuned for some more on that. Um, we also, you know, help, we partner with the city on the rural renewal stream. Um, as far as on the advisory committee goes, you know, the city was one of the first communities to be designated and the largest. And I really believe that that program was, you know, made for us to help, you know, streamline um, newcomers into our community and really our employers have been embracing um, those folks as well. And the last thing I would highlight is our chamber is a member of the Provincial Talent Development Task Force, and that's co-chaired with the Alberta Chambers of Commerce and the Alberta Post-Secondary Network. And that partnership is set to enable and facilitate a strong culture of direct engagement, alignment, and coordination amongst Alberta's post-secondaries and the business community while informing public policy. So really, I mean, in essence, that just means ensuring that the post-secondaries are aware of the needs of the business community, you know, align information gathering and information sharing. And we are proud to bring our regional voice to that table and, you know, really understand what's happening there and help 
uh, those others understand what's happening here as well. Perfect. Thanks, Tanya. John, I want to talk a little bit about attraction and retention in regards to the creation of a new police service. So it's obviously uh, resulted in significant recruitment activities. Uh, can you share some of the successes and what you've learned to date in regards to that attraction campaign? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'll begin with the learnings, and there's plenty of them, let me tell you. Uh, where do I even begin? Uh, as you saw in the video, I believe it was Councillor O'Toole that identified that the last time something like this happened was in 1956, and that was the city of Camrose. So folks, there's no playbook for this. There's no manual, there's no directions. Um, we don't know what we don't know. Um, one of the things that we learned very quickly is time is of the essence. We've heard that term many, many times, but I assure you that uh, we experienced a lag in time in terms of uh, getting our recruiting uh, process underway. Uh, we built the core of our foundation uh, fairly quickly, as I said, uh, approaching the end of 2023, but uh, we should have jumped on that recruiting uh, strategy much quicker. Um, then came the pain of uh, dealing with the online network and recruiting uh, that way applications. Uh, many experiences we felt were the fault of the applicants. In fact, we learned that there were some bugs in the uh, processes we'd identified. That was on us. We had to iron those out. Uh, so clarity is huge in terms of uh, your relationship with your prospective applicants. Um, experienced officer applicants. Now these are uh, a special group of folks we're trying to attract, but again, have to be very careful about uh, those folks because there's obviously a reason they're leaving an established organization looking to join ours. Um, what we also didn't anticipate was the level of interest we would have from uh, prospective applicants, both uh, brand new recruits and uh, experienced officers. The Alberta Provincial Cognitive Abilities Test. This is the police test that you have to write. Everybody must pass this. Again, we didn't anticipate the length of time it would take to purchase and uh, get the equipment delivered, get it set up, so that we could administer our own A-Prep testing. One issue after another. Vehicles, you have to order vehicles. That takes a year. Firearms, initially it was gonna take several months. Body armor, uniforms, and any of the kit associated um, is, is, as I said, either difficult to get, back-ordered, or no longer in, uh, in stock. Quickly, successes. This is something that we want to focus on because we've learned a lot. Did I mention 184 applicants, brand new recruits? Over 30 applications for experienced officers. We're going to limit that to eight starting at the end of May. Uh, we have two new Grand Prairie Police Service cruisers being deckled out. You'll see those on the streets soon. We'll be in uniform here in a matter of a couple of weeks, so watch out for that. We do have firearms now, equipment, and supply connections. We've developed those relationships, and we're working uh, eagerly with those folks. Uh, we have great relationships with all Alberta Police Services, the Alberta Sheriffs, and every single one of them have been phenomenal to us in assisting us. So now we have a team at Grand Prairie Police Service that is a bit battle-tested in terms of starting up a new police service. We're very confident that with our new class of experienced officers in uh, May and our recruit class in September, that by the end of this year, you'll see about 30 uniformed members and about a dozen police vehicles out on the streets in Grand Prairie serving you folks. Thank you, John. I think that's really, uh, so based on those numbers, you're on target for the 24 members, 30 members in uniforms, new cars, some experienced, some new recruits. That's great news, thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to move to a bit, Nessa, in regards to attraction and re tra uh, retention as well. Obviously, your role is a little bit different in the training and development of, of uh, individuals, uh, whether that's a new uh, career path you might be on or you're fresh out of high school. Uh, there's often an opportunity to talk about training and development and, and the draw on workers um, and their spouses and what it means to relocate to Grand Prairie. Can you share what Northwest Polytech is doing in regards to increasing opportunities in training in the region. Sure, thanks. So two pieces I want to chat about here is first our strategic enrollment management 
plan, action plan that we launched, and then also our continued work on new programming. So on the strategic enrollment management action plan, we launched that in 2023, and essentially what that is, is it looks at the lifespan of, of, of our learners. And so that's from right from the 13-year-old whose teacher, mom or dad, is telling them they need to go to college or go to post-secondary, or it could be the 33-year-old or the 53-year-old, and then that follows them through their first interest, so maybe they seek us out, get some information, they apply, they register, they enroll, they graduate, then they become part of our alumni family, and then we invite them back in, in some way to continue on with NWP. So for our, on the strategic enrollment management side, the, the work that we've been doing on that uh, recruiting piece is, is really getting our brand out there, being seen more, and sharing the information on what we currently offer and what's available in the region for, for, for learners and for people who are thinking of coming back. Um, or for people who are thinking of coming back, pardon me. And that's right from on the credit side, those who want a certificate, diploma, or degree, or maybe they're just looking for the upskill or to, or to get their safety tickets for the industry side on our continuing education piece. On the new program uh, pieces on what we're doing to improve training opportunities, so we've got a list and we're in various stages of either exploration or development or seeking approval. And so just continuing on from the successes of 2023, we're currently working on a power engineering technology, uh, third period instrumentation, our own Bachelor of Education degree, and that degree would see a route for both primary teachers as well as secondary teachers. Um, water, wastewater technician, hospitality, um, an agriculture operations program, uh, it, it branching into the engineering technology programs, a Bachelor of Health Sciences degree, and then we're working with other post-secondaries to bring programs that they offer to the region, and, and so perhaps the most exciting is, is working with the University of Alberta on a rural medical education and what having medical education and students being able to complete their medical degree in Grand Prairie would look like. Thanks, Vanessa. I'm going to divide up the questions a little bit for a, uh, in respect of time, so uh, I'm going to ask first the panelists, I'll ask uh, Vanessa since you have the mic, can you talk, um, I, I would think that you and I are on the same page in this in regards to um, organizations are best when they're not working in silos, and so we speak about uh, various areas of collaboration on a regular basis. Can you share about some of the collaboration between Northwest Polytech, uh, maybe the city, or any other organizations on stage or off the stage that you're focusing on currently? Sure, thanks. Uh, so as, as the mayor said, we do have many collaborations. Uh, some that come to mind on the industry side are Spartan, Finning, and Caterpillar, and Harley-Davidson. We have a 20-plus year partnership with the Grand Prairie Friendship Center. We're the only post-secondary in the country that has an on-campus friendship center. Um, and we have working partnerships with the city, with the chamber, with the police service, with AHS North Zone, the Grand Prairie Regional Hospital, community features, uh, the GP Regional Innovation Network, all of the school districts in the area, and many more. So maybe I'll leave it there. Thank you. I'm going to pass the mic to Tanya next. If you could, uh, same question, Tanya. Tell me about some of the collaboration that the Chamber Group is currently working on. Awesome. Thanks, Jackie. This is one of my favorite topics, and I just have to say before I dive into our specifics, you know, I get to talk to my colleagues and other business leaders across the province and the country, and people are continuously amazed of how well our region collaborates and they just want the handbook on how to make it work. But I don't think it's rocket scientists or rocket science. I think we just need to um, all have the best uh, things in mind and just work together. So anyways, the um, Growing the North is one really strong example of our collaboration. So we're actually one of 10 partners that host Growing the North. The city and NWP are one of those partners as well. And we just had our 15th uh, year conference, um, and that brings together leaders from across the whole northwest uh, area of our province and also northeast BC. We really saw an increase in um, partners from BC and further north this year, which was really great to see. Um, and it's an economic development conference that brings together municipal leaders and businesses and organizations to really, you know, hear the same information at, um, in the room and also connect one-on-one -on -one with networking and explore ideas and opportunities and challenges to really continue to um, quite literally grow the north. Um, we also had um, 
we had 15 bursaries for small businesses this year as a result, thanks to our um, sponsors and our committee as well. And part of the um, sponsorships is we also invite students to participate, uh, which is always great to see. Another one is our Peace Region Energy Show. This is a partnership with the Grand Prairie Petroleum Association. And uh, it, this is petroleum, or this is energy show year. Uh, we rebranded from the Peace Region Petroleum Show. It's been running since 1995. Now we had to skip one in 2021, thanks to COVID, but 2022 we brought it back. It was a little bit of a slower show. Um, so I'm happy to say we're already have more booths sold now than when we hosted the show in 2022. So it's trending in a really great direction. Um, it's fabulous to showcase that energy industry. It's such an important part of our community um, and the province and the country. This year, we are exploring a student project in partnership with the school districts, with careers, um, NWP, and energy companies to expose grade nine and 10 students to uh, what a career in energy looks like. I mean, it's not just one straightforward path. There's so many options. Um, and we also have a role to play in changing the narrative around energy. Um, it's not going anywhere. We need various forms of energy, and our region provides the best. So we're happy to be hosting that in the middle of May. Perfect. To John, uh, we're fortunate to live in a region and a community that people from all backgrounds are celebrated. And so could you share, John, some of the things that your organization maybe has already started or plans to do in regards to building community? Thank you, Mayor. So uh, as I previously mentioned, building community, uh, you know, in many aspects allows us to police the bond with the people. Um, we are connecting with agencies, neighborhoods, associations, groups, businesses, uh, you name it. Uh, we're in touch with them. And what we're doing with uh, these relationships is building trust. Trust is the cornerstone of policing. You've heard a term, uh, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, we're of the opinion that it takes a community to police a community. So we're going to involve everybody. We've had phenomenal interest in uh, everybody becoming stakeholders with your new police service. And uh, I tell everybody, be careful what you ask for because we will lean on you. We will leverage every single entity, person, individual organization. We want to strategize the best possible public safety model. And as has been illustrated here uh, multiple times, there are a lot of great, both uh, individual leaders and organizations that are going to help us meet with success. Uh, You've all heard of Sir Robert Peel, uh, the modern uh, father of mo modern day policing. He's, uh, he's got nine principles that he introduced in terms of policing. This was in the early 1800s. And uh, I'm only gonna share a couple with you that uh, really resonate in terms of the philosophy we're going to employ. The power of the police to fulfill their function and duties is dependent on public approval of their existence. Actions and behavior and our on our ability to secure and maintain public trust. You've heard Chief LaCusta at many uh, engagements, uh, stakeholder engagements and other events, talk about the trust that this community has placed in us. It is ours to lose and we do not intend to lose it. Uh, to seek and preserve public favor, not by pandering to public opinion, but by being independent through our policies and observing the rule of law. Uh, offering individual service and friendship to all members of the public, regardless of social status, wealth, or standing, and by ready offering of individual sacrifice, that being your police service in protecting and preserving life. And finally, to maintain at all times a relationship with the public that gives reality to the historic tradition that the police are the public and the public are the police. The police being the only members of the community who are paid full time to conduct those duties, but those duties are inherent and uh, a, a responsibility that we all share. So building a rapport with the community, being a part of the community is, is, is a, a very integral pillar of our existence. Thanks. I'm, I'm actually gonna skip Shane on this one, but uh, he can incorporate it in his last uh, question. I'm gonna go to uh, Dr. Shane next. Uh, our city, I truly believe, has a, a bright future. We have lots to look forward to. Uh, maybe you can give me two max things, items, that we can expect from Northwest Polytech in 2024 and beyond. Two is tough. Um, so first I'll say skilled trades programming expansion on both of our campuses, and then stay tuned for the rural medical education. 
John, same question. Two things to look forward to on 2024 and beyond. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, 2024, you'll see upwards of 30 uniformed police members from your Grand Prairie Police Service, a dozen police vehicles. That's one. Number two is uh, renewed commitment and faith in the decision council made to create the new municipal police service. We are committed to uh, ensuring that that meets with success for everybody's benefit. Okay, before you pass the mic, can you tell the room what the police cars are going to look like so when they see them, they're not going, what the heck is that? <laughs> uh, the police vehicles are Ford Explorers, black in color, with the uh, doors painted white. So they'll be very familiar to uh, folks, traditional uh, police uh, colors. Thanks. Tanya, two things that the Chamber of Commerce is working on in 2024 or beyond. All right. So one of the things I'll highlight is our community connections. We're working really hard to strengthen our regional connectivity. And we're also working hard to explore um, connecting with communities that we might not have traditionally. So this is beyond geographic communities. Um, it includes expanding our knowledge and intentionality around diversity, equity, accessibility, and inclusion. And uh, we have a board-led committee that's working hard on that. And I'll also, I'll just bring it back to the regional workforce development again. We are going to continue to work with our partners on that and we look forward to launching some um, campaigns to attract and retain more workers to our area. Thank you. Shane, so you can loop it into things that you think our organization is building in the community that possibly we haven't discussed, or two things that you're looking forward to in 2024 and beyond. Well, uh, as an organization uh, that has 30 departments and 300 services, uh, we do a lot every day, and, and anyone that uh, drove here on the roads and expected the traffic lights to work or maybe took the transit or in a, a facility like this, which we own and operate, uh, we, we impact everyone's lives every day. But if I were to pick two, I'd probably pick the two that are in my bio because it probably reflects my performance uh, um, evaluation. Um, working with the best council ever on a health uh, retention and traction strategy and you'll see a lot more of our uh, new branding strategy, which is uh, uh, filtering out into the community. But uh, that's some, some visible things you'll see from us. Thank you. I'm going to uh, wrap it up with some closing remarks. just want to make sure I didn't miss anything in my notes. But first, let's give this great panel a round of applause. <laughs> so yeah, nothing major. I just want to truly thank you for being here. I really enjoyed this first iteration of this state of the city. I hope you learned something, that there's some takeaways, some things that organizations in our community are working on on a regular basis. Possibly you'll learn something about the city that you're unaware of. But I tell you, going forward, I'm extremely excited about 2024. I'm also excited about the collaborative work that these organizations and many organizations on our, in our community commit to daily. In my opinion, this community has a secret sauce that no other community has the privilege of having. We are inspired daily to, to support each other. We look at things differently, whether it's our entrepreneurial spirit, whether it's our grit, our hard work, it's all unique. And, and I can tell you that traveling other mid-sized cities across Canada, we are very fortunate to have a combination of all those keys to success. So I thank you. People in this room are truly part of that success. And it's you coming to events like this, individuals like uh, my friends on the stage here today, that really set us up for future successes. So thank you. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And I'm sure I'll see you all soon.